Maury, I briefly mentioned SKUs and digitalization at the beginning of the program. How does your technology and expertise directly impact the reduction of supply side SKUs as well as the digitalization of workflows in network operations? I think uh, this is a great chance to explain uh, how Supermicro helped uh, on these topics. Um, First of all, the building block solution has been widely adapted in our strategy for data center type of the product design. And it's allowed modularized design scalabilities and also able to do the uh, sustainabilities, save the resources. This concept is widely used in our product design. And because of this good chance in the open rent uh, design, we also recognize these uh, possibilities to bring this data center building block solution into this uh, uh, phone factors consideration. So first of all, um, we share a certain uh, development uh, resources to make sure our internal software support from how a monitoring perspective will be like the data center level quality. And those can be reused and tunables and become another one offer package at the OEM service to the telco environment because they are different telemetries or requirements. And to reach this level, uh, the building block solution is just the first steps. We also have a global infrastructures. We design made in USA, and we also have a regional hub in Asia and regional hub in Europe. And this all our own uh, integration lines. Uh, we prepare the material in the advanced. Uh, definitely, we cannot prepare everything uh, all together at one time. So reduce the skills into the focus, uh, uh, optimize hardware is the first step. Um, we also recognize uh, you cannot just offer the hardware and then uh, wait for the software partner like Rakuten Symphony to tune everything, especially when there's new technology coming in. Uh, if we want to reach the level Geoff just mentioned, the very highly secured devices, uh, the less hardware change will be easier and faster for the deployment. So we have to make sure our uh, system reliable enough, reliable enough and also flexible for the expansions. And reduce the, uh, the skew is the key. And we definitely have a lot of skills to help the telco industry, but uh, we want to focus on uh, one or no more than three skills and on this open rate in the DU and the CU area. And because of this, it's very focused. We also can continue the roadmap. Uh, actually, we're starting from the ISLEC generations, which is third gen uh, Xeon SP, all the way till now the latest generation, the fifth generations. We can use the same form factors. And those material can be reused and also the extra investment to make it reliable. So um, in this process here, um, to, to make this uh, building block solution also possible become the telco consideration form factor, it's our strategy. And it turned out um, customer have a chance to see the value now. And as for digitalizations, I think uh, the most important thing we want to highlight for those network topics, um, we have a lot of the possibility to fine tuning our internal uh, settings to make sure those parameters able to be controlled 100% by Rakuten Symphony software sim world. And to reach that level, they are able to watch everything, inventory information and location and status, including uh, also the software on top of that. And this is probably the most important things. If we cannot reach this level, and it's very hard to continue to promise, even through the higher level, through the AI to create intelligence. So I think uh, this will be the good chance that we are going to continue to invest more in this topic. That's very good to hear. Thanks, Maury. Uh, Jeff, let's come across to you for some comments on this. Yeah, I, I cannot stress enough uh, what Maury just said and why they are such a, a key partner to us. I recommend to everybody who's considering how to build networks moving forward, not only to consider the technology aspects, but also the economic model aspects. And one of those areas, and again, one of the reasons why uh, we have the designs we do, is to optimize supply chain. We believe that we could get uh, compute platforms down to four different SKUs for the whole network. Basically, high performance compute outdoor, uh, in uh, indoor and general data center compute, uh, outdoor and indoor. So uh, if you get down to four SKUs, and those then four SKUs all inherit the invested research and benefits coming from Intel uh, inside the uh, servers, which means that their capabilities and capacity naturally increase, 
you manage that. Just think about the warehousing savings. Just think about the uh, specialist knowledge that's no longer required. You've completely horizontalized the hardware supply chain. And, and the economics then start to mirror that uh, of which you see in the, the mega data center players uh, outside our industry and more in the, the internet uh, and enterprise worlds. Thanks, Jeff. Well, we're about halfway through our program now, but before we continue, I just want to mention our poll. As well as submitting questions to our guests, you can also take part in our industry poll. We are asking just one question on automation and giving you a choice of four possible answers. And here is the question. Approximately what percentage of your telco operations are automated? And as you can see, the answer choices range from zero through to 100%. We're going to keep the poll open for a few more days, so don't miss out. Make sure that your vote counts, and we'll be revealing the results later on Telecom TV. OK, on with the questions. Um, we touched on this earlier in the programme, but this issue of greenfield versus brownfield comes up so often during our discussions, and we've received a number of questions on this topic. Maury, could you provide examples of how Supermicro's hardware solutions have been instrumental in greenfield networks? And is anything different for existing mobile network operators? Yes, um, to our experience, I think um, the requirement from, from the operators, they are similar. And then we define the ground field and bring fields uh, Definitely because uh, there are lots of the new infrastructure have to be prepared before you deploy those things. And in the green fields, you have a lot of uh, choice and also have a lot of decisions uh, to be made. And in this case here, um, we realized that Rakuten Symphony have a lot of the uh, guidance need the super micro to follow instead of we propose many kind of different hardware. So greenfield doesn't mean we can do whatever we want. Like a, Jeff make a very good examples uh, down to the very specific four series of SKUs. And in this kind of type of network, the tuner board a software is the key. Uh, even though you can control many kind of things to select your own radio unit and your tower and network and also the infrastructure in the cloud space, it still have lots of the protocol to follow because eventually after deploying for the open run, still need to connect back to the live network. And flexibilities give Supermicro a chance to uh, fine tuning the performance. Uh, the performance means uh, uh, the CPU requirement to access to those uh, radio unit. And sometimes it could be the two or the two to the three. And when they change their configurations, and our hardware also need to be uh, fast enough to respond to those uh, configuration change. And also, there are lots of the security requirements <clears throat> to be verified, including the system level inside those area. And we are requested to provide a very uh, flexible and programmable uh, interface, allow a Rakuten Symphony a software team to touch every angles. And automation process also have lots of requirement, including have to double check. You want to have a zero touch provisionings and how to control your systems without touching it at the field, still keep the very high secure environment. And even we call it green field, you can imagine it's still very secure and highly controlled area. So to reach that level, I think automation process is un it's unavoidable. You have to make sure that, that will be fully control everything in the field. Definitely, we still uh, plan for some worst cases. And then does also make the system need to be serviceable easily. And I think uh, to the ground fields, the lesson that we have here, um, we have to make sure our cost is competitive enough for Rakuten Symphony to keep their positions, continue delivering the flexible software with the good values, um, because there are lots of the options, which is the ground field or other operators, they can still use what they have network right now. So uh, key is the cost to reductions and also the very reliable hardware to stay in the uh, mobile network. So this is about the ground field part, the comment. And as for the brown fields, many people have experienced analogies, and I think it's much even complicated than the ground field settings. And we also very lucky have a chance to, to do that job as well for Rakuten Symphony. So um, 
to the concept wise are very similar for the supporting model, but for the deployment pressure, uh, I think uh, Rakuten Symphony as a leader in this segment carry lots of the pressure and we are very honored to support behind them as well. Great. Well, thanks for explaining that for us, Maury. Um, because another popular area with our community is sustainability. Uh, now, Caroline, um, energy sustainability is a key issue in the growth of telecom networks and services and becoming more so. Can the use of automation in hardware reduce energy costs and associated greenhouse gas emissions? Uh, definitely. And, and in fact, I wanted to highlight um, our uh, fourth generation, uh, Xeon, that has uh, built in a VM boost. It's an SOC that has the acceleration built in. It increased the 2x capacity at 20% uh, further power reduction and the usage of uh, network AI to reduce and improve, significantly improve the, the power efficiency. I mean, going back to what uh, both Jeff and Maury talked about, Number one is that this, if the system is designed modular enough, and then Intel has added the, uh, the sustainability features and especially a closed loop telemetry that allows us to adjust different uh, states, uh, P states and C states, and that's part of the automation, by the way. It's all of the things done without manual uh, intervention that we automatically put the, uh, the CPU power in different states when it's low usage versus high usage. All of these, in it's part of the automation process. If, if you think about that, it no longer requires a human intervention. And through a very secure enclave, you can adjust the power at the uh, for the telco operators. It's all part of the uh, the sustainability and driving further power efficiency in this open and desegregated uh, network. Yeah, thanks, Caroline. It's an exciting area, this. Um, Maury, what about you and from your perspective, what can automation do to help reduce energy costs? In this process here, uh, I think automation definitely doesn't mean you have to change every day. And then I think that's the key. Um, for instance, like uh, Caroline mentioned about the VRAN features into this segment, uh, help the open RAN able to reduce the components. Previously, we have extra add-on card. And now, because this feature has been embedded into the CPU, and it's not just reduce the uh, power consumptions, also make our system design much uh, easier. Uh, previously, we have to handle when the Intel ACC100 uh, delivered the performance after have to bring the extra heat into the systems and we are able to solve that together in one CPU. So that definitely also helped to reduce the system level design and to reduce the fan pressures. And this will allow us to save the uh, power. And the second thing is uh, because of this system design become much more compact and it also allow uh, the deployment to the different locations. And to reach these uh, features, we also uh, understand the sustainabilities, not just through the uh, component level support. We also uh, start to think about to offer the liquid cooling type choices. And this will also be another consideration, but it's not just for one angle from the DU perspective, it's actually to look at the telco cloud infrastructures. Certain of the deployment will be in the data center side to support the telco cloud. And those uh, level of the deployment, liquid cooling will also dramatically to bring down the energy cost. And all this all together, uh, I think the telco uh, operators will have a different angle to look at their uh, future infrastructure set up. Thank you, Maury. Uh, and Jeff, um, you know, reducing costs and improving energy efficiency would seem a, a great use case for automation. Yeah, absolutely, Guy. I mean, now that the technology from both uh, uh, Caroline's uh, uh, commentary and, and Maury's commentary uh, we have to build networks for uh, for peak traffic. How often is there peak traffic? And traditionally, we've always had to keep those networks full on and full powered, irrelevant of, of what the actual utilization is of the uh, equipment. Now the technology is allowing us to uh, switch states very rapidly uh, between uh, active and uh, uh, and passive, and then also dynamically moving jobs into uh, uh, into clusters of, of servers and powering off, uh, uh, putting to sleep uh, certain clusters. Couldn't do that at all without uh, the programmability that's afforded by uh, all the technology being provided by our partners, and also 
the data and then the ability to have algorithms that uh, understand the state and, and uh, automate in real time. So I, I think the power usage of uh, networks today is the worst it's ever going to be. That should be the statement of the industry and, and every year we should be reducing it radically.